All right, we're gonna now um, do a little quick tutorial on how you can uh, mod Cyberpunk 2077 on your computer in fairly easy steps. So without further ado, let's get started. Couple of assumptions to get out of the way right off the bat um, today. All of the mods that I'll be using, in fact, all of the mods that I'm actually using, I come from Nexus.com. <clears throat> there are some other sites that do have some uh, mods available. I do know there's some some Discord as well. I personally have not joined up with them, and I'm not really tracking them, so I'm just going to uh, show what I know. And really, at this point, are two mods, well, maybe three, only two that I'm going to be talking about. What I'm going to call more the simple mods which simply are those mods that end in .archive and go into a dedicated mod folder. Now, if you haven't installed mods before, you'll want to go ahead and uh, go to your main Cyberpunk directory. Mine, of course, is a Steam, Steam version, so it's in my Steam apps common Cyberpunk folder. Um, archive, PC, and you'll have a content directory already. You also need to make a mod directory. And that's where our archive files will be dropped into. These are the mods I'm currently using. Okay, now they come in two really different distinct things. The easy ones, uh, for instance, in this example, uh, the no intro videos, which makes the game actually start up quite a bit faster. This uh, mod does come with the intact uh, file structure file structure already there, which makes it really, really easy for, for what we're doing. So you'll see in our main directory, we have an archive folder, and it begins with an archive folder. For something like this, what we're going to do is just drag and drop it right into your Cyberpunk folder. Now, if you haven't installed this before, you're obviously not going to get this replace or skip files. I'm just going to go ahead and replace it for this video. And that's all it takes for something like that. Um, a more challenging example is the more gore, more gore uh, version 2.0. And here you'll see that the mod actually just comes without any any kind of directory structures so for something like that again if it ends in archive it's going to go into the archive mod directory here so let's drag and drop that in and replace that simple okay these simple mods though don't do a whole lot they are things like oh uh, texture replacements, um, like I'm using a couple of hair mods that are like that. They just take one hair that's in included in the game and then replace it. Very, very simple to deal with. The other ones, of course, are mods that actually require um, Cyber Engine tweaks. And so we're going to go ahead and I'm going to install that right now. Um, it doesn't say Cyber Engine Tweaks in this one. It comes as game version 1.52, which signifies that it is current with the version of Cyberpunk that is now available. Um, this, you'll notice, has a bin directory. And again, in our main uh, Cyberpunk, we'll see that the structure goes like this. We get to plugins, and plugins is where the Cyber Engine Tweaks actually goes. And it's got its own mod directory using Lua scripts and it looks like primarily in-game assets, assets and resources. So for this, we're just going to go ahead and do it as well. I'm going to go to here, which is our cyber engine tweaks and drag and drop it directly into our main uh, folder. And because the directory structure is already intact, it'll just go ahead and put it where we need it. Um, several mods that use Cyber Engine Tweaks also use native settings UI. And 
it's worth just installing, I think, um, for those mods as they come up. I, I'm using a Metro System, for instance, and I, when I fire up the game, I'll show you how this all works. Um, let's see here. Right, and so let's just go ahead and do, I'm going to do a quick little demonstration on the two things. We're going to do the uh, more blood splatters, which is a cyber engines tweak dependent. Again, the file structure here is really quite good. So again, all we have to really do is drag the bin folder and drop it into our main directory. This one requires an additional step, which is the optional splatters. And this one I'm actually going to be using ones that decals that last 10 minutes. Now you'll notice this goes, this is a regular mod file. These, uh, because it's adding these textures. So because it's like this, all we have to do is drag it in to our main folder and it, it's set up. All right, the one other thing that I want to show because I want to show how the difference between native UI settings and uh, using the Cyber Engine tweaks uh, in game GUI, we'll, we'll go ahead and put in the Neon Rims Color mod. And again, making sure that I'm in the right folder, I'll just drag it and drop it right into our main directory. And being a Cyber Engine tweaks mod, it installs itself into that bin folder. And we'll see the uh, no intro screens mod at work. And it does seem to speed things up. Hey everyone, welcome to Info Flash. Say, did y'all lose power yesterday too? Yeah, when the lights went out, there I was cooking dinner. Oh well, if we're getting specific, I was nuking a half-eaten burrito I found wedged in my couch cushions. All right. First, let's look at the native settings UI. It'll pop up in uh, your options menu and it tells which uh, cyber engine tweak mods you're using that actually use this GUI. A lot of the other ones don't. For instance, the uh, Neon Rims mod that I just installed in this example, we need to use the cyber engines tweak. The first time you fire up your game after installing cyber engines tweak, you'll, it'll give you a prompt and you'll have to uh, dedicate a hotkey to pull it up. So I'm going to push my hotkey now and pull up the menu. And as you see, I've got several running at this point, but this is the mod that we're looking for. And this is the, the rim color mod. Um, as you can see, we can actually move it so we can see what we're doing. Uh, we're going to exit out of that. And um, I think for every bike after patch 1.5 if you press control it turns the lights on your wheels on um, it's alt I think is the default for headlights yeah it is on mine anyway so what you want to do is you want to turn your headlight or you want to turn your rim lights on and then pull up your CET menu and as we can see we've actually got three distinct um, presets that we can install and how it works is if you go into like your individual wheels then you can pull up we have underglow which I'm not using a back wheel um, front wheel and your headlight you can change all of the colors on these and so let's see back wheel I'm gonna go with a kind of a red purple motif here and we can see we can adjust the luminosity basically I'll put it about there and then the front so I'd like this green bike thing going on we're gonna put it in a green range and also like that 
and then finally clear save changes and save the light changes and then simply press uh, your hotkey for cyber engine tweaks to, to shut it and there we go so there's plenty of uh, videos out there showing both gore and more blood so I'm not going to deal with that in this one and I've got the memory leak bug showing up now so I'm going to close this video and reboot my computer and then maybe do a little bit of playing um, please like and subscribe if you have any questions or comments I always like seeing them in the comments cheers <laughs>